way up. Yes. You could meet them on the so way down. So when you're climbing and going up. Be nice fits. to everyone. Be nice. Be nice. Mm -hmm. Jala, someone yeah. who was also very nice, mm -hmm. and I'm going to talk about him. He's, he's, he's passed away now, but and I hope his family wouldn't mind. I'm sure they won't. But a great, great human being. The late, great Jenga Karume. Mm -hmm. Heard the name, right? Yes. He was MP, by the way, after uh, after my uncle was MP for a long time in Kiamba. Mm -hmm. Jenga Karume is the one who became MP. But before that, businessman, huh? he has he written a fantastic book. I've read his book. From called Charcoal, from charcoal to, to Gold. gold. Uh, from Charcoal to Gold, I've read it. This man used to sell charcoal. Started off in El Bergen, Molo. You know that side? Yes. And I'm telling you, to last. and charcoal is not an easy business, eh? And you become so suit. I mean, you become black like suit. You know, like the charcoal. Mm -hmm. It's it's not easy business. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he made his millions and billions, and he was a great, great guy. Other than that, by the way, did you know, Jenga Karume never had anybody's telephone number in his phone. He memorized everything in his head. If you gave him your number today, 0722, blah, 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 he'd memorize it. What? Um, he had nobody's number on his phone. And then on top of that, Jalas, anyone can uh, uh, can uh, back me on this. If he told you, Jalas, come to my office Monday, 6.33 a.m. 6.33. If you showed up at 6.36, he wouldn't see you because he has someone else ready in, play, in line. He was that meticulous with Ish. time. If he tells you show up at 7.02, you better be there at 7, Jalas. Because at 7.03, he's going to take the next guy who's waiting for him. And people used to fl flock his office. He was like meticulous. Every day in his office here at Jakaranda, Hapa Westlands, mm. every day he's there at 6, if not before. Every day. Unbelievable. So, we're very good family friends. Very good family friends. And he was very supportive of my mother because, you know, my father died when I was very young. He was very supportive. Every time my mother needed help in anything, he was very, you know, great guy. Great guy. He's always very accommodating. So one day, <laughs> here comes the story. So one day, uh, he tells, it, it's August holidays, right? We call yes. it August holidays. And he tells my mother, listen, uh, I know your children have never been to Mombasa. And I'm going to treat you and your children for an entire week. Come and spend time with us in Mombasa. And your kids can learn to uh, can, can meet my kids and, and, you know, they can get to know each other. So mom comes home. Right? Yes. And she says, guess what? We're going to Mombasa. Not only are we going to Mombasa, we're flying to Mombasa. What? I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's like Christmas had come in August. What? We are flying next Sunday to Mombasa. We're going to stay a whole week with the Karumas. We couldn't believe it. I, I, I couldn't believe it. You know what I did? Yes. I started packing. <laughs> it's Sunday today, huh? <laughs> we're, go we're going next Sunday. Yes. I started packing. <laughs> Took out my suitcase, uh -huh. took out my few clothes, uh -huh. and uh, of course the pajamas, you know, because, you know, pajamas yes. are key. Put the pajamas on top. So every evening I would take the pajamas out, put them on, sleep with them. Morning, take them off, fold them, put them where? In the, in the bag. <laughs> I'm taking one week. Ask my sisters, ask my mother. My, I was so excited. On a plane heading to Mombasa. I was 10 years old. Jamal's age now. So Sunday arrives. And I, you know, lit I haven't slept all week. I'm so excited. I'm dreaming. I'm on the plane. I'm dreaming of the sandy beaches of Mombasa. I'm so excited. The rest of the family, you know, they, if they were, they didn't show it. So the day arrives. We leave home early in the morning. Because you know it was early morning flight, yeah? You leave about 5.30. Head to the airport. Check in. All the excitement galore. Bags are put in the belt. You're given your boarding pass. Now you're in line. You can see the plane outside. <laughs> you're waiting. Excitement. Call the plane. Please call. The, I want to get in the plane. Call it. Finally, they call the plane. The flight. And we walk out onto the tarmac. 
climb up the stairs into the aircraft. Nice flight attendants welcome you. You sit down. I sat down with my brother. My sister sat together and my mother alone. Excite. I'm looking outside. Well, look, I'm saying, my goodness, I'm in the plane now. We're heading to Mombasa. Right? Yes. <sighs> Next thing I remember, we were landing. What do you mean? We were landing. <laughs> I blacked out. <laughs> The excitement of the entire week. And the fact Jalas. that your dude slept the whole week. week. The minute those doors closed, Jalas. You blacked out. Yes, they said, uh, Kariboni, uh, Uwanja, oh, one day again, Mombasa. <laughs> That's when I was being woken up. I was gone. So you didn't see anything? Nothing. You could have told me I was still in Nairobi, I would have believed you. But it was a fantastic week. We spent it with the Karumes. We got to know each other. Fantastic. Great kids. Great. I mean, some of them were a lot older than us. Eh? But uh, the couple who were our age. Uh, You're still friends? Today? Oh, very much. I mean, Shiro, she's at KTB. They call her Wanjiro, but I know her as Shiro because, you know, we, we used to spend a lot of time together. Mokuhe, there's Henry. Uh, they had another brother who passed away called Kennedy Joroge. Great guy, great guy. And then, of course, uh, there's another guy. Um, we used to call him Richard Pryor. Good looking kid, man. We called him Richard Pryor. <laughs> Kigera, his name is Kigera. And then there's one Jama, the, the youngest one. Mm -hmm. Oh, all of them, I mean, good, good, lovely kids. Oh my, we had a good time. We had, we had a great time. Wow. <laughs> that was my experience. And then later on, yeah. of course, as a flight attendant, of course, I would fly the world for free. But, you know, nothing p compared to that what first experience of boarding that plane and blacking out. And that, that is a story. story. A day. A day. It's the hot breakfast with Jeff and Jelano.